Hey there folks, this is Narlo here. We were talking about in the whole Fallout thing, I mentioned that I am working on a project of playing a board game a week this year to try and work through my my backlog of my wall of shame of the games that I haven't gotten around to playing yet. So to do that, um, we have showed you Fallout, the Fallout Shelter game, but before that I was playing Oniram here. Um, this is a card game published by Z-Man Games, and it was... I've got the digital version on my phone, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, this counts as the first game that I've played this year because I was playing it, well I play it quite often. Whenever I got five minutes of work, I'll sit, pull out the phone, and do a hand of Oniram. And, uh, but it counts as the one for the first week of January, as Fallout Shelter was really the second one, but was the first one I got up. So this is what the actual card game looks like when it's laid out on a table. And as you can see in the Dissolve here, this is what it looks like on your phone or your tablet. So, uh, yeah, it's very close to the actual game that, uh, it's identical in the way that it plays to the actual card game itself. So I'm counting it as uh, one of my tabletop games uh, for this year. Now the narration and explanation that I'm doing here is all recorded in post-production. I didn't have my phone set up correctly to record it, record what I was explaining while the game was going on. Um, had one of the settings set wrong. So all it did was record the actual game and not my voice at the same time. So so things will be a little bit more me instead of explaining as it happens. It might be just a second or so late as, you know, action takes place on the screen. And we just kind of commentate as it goes along. Uh, think of me kind of a uh, cross between the play-by-play -play guy and the color commentator at the same time here. So here in Anirum you are the Dreamwalker and you are trying to get through the labyrinth to make it to your land of dreams and get to sleep. But you see there are 76 cards in the deck, you always have five in your hand and any time that you play a deck, play a card from your hand, you draw another one from the deck. As you see, there are 71 cards left in the deck there at the bottom right. That's to help keep track of what might have been played, what might have not. Ten of the cards, as you see with the red number on the left, ten of the cards are nightmares. Uh, they are there to capture you and try and keep you in the labyrinth and keep you from escaping. The cards that you deal out with you into your hand, there are three different kinds of cards. There are location cards, there are key cards, and there are door cards. Key cards, you see one on the far left there, that is a brown key card, and they can be used for various purposes like reshuffling the deck or discovering doors. The other locations are used for discovering doors. As you see, they come in two suits. You have suns and you have moons. And every, every um, one of the colors, there are four colors, is red, blue, green, and brown. Each one of them has two doors to, that have to be discovered. There are three keys of each color. And then the, number, the, the colors are decreasing. The red, um, there are always four moons. And then there are nine red suns, eight blue suns, seven green suns, and six brown suns. So when you're having to discard a card and all, you might want to keep track of what has already been discarded. And if you have to, get rid of the, like the reds and the blues before you get rid of the greens and the browns. There are a few other rules, like when you can use keys and a limbo, which is down there on the left-hand side, but we'll cover those as we come across them. So we'll start out by playing a red card here. We're going to play a red sun to the labyrinth. As you see, we immediately draw out a, a green sun to replace it. You always have five cards in your hand. Then we'll lay out a red moon. Now, this is also demonstrating what Aniram calls its golden rule, and that's you can never have a card of the same symbol follow another card. A red, yeah, a sun can never be laid down on a sun. A moon can never follow a moon. You have to do moon, sun, key. You know, I can lay a key down now. I can lay another sun down now. 
uh, but I could not, for instance, I couldn't lay that blue moon. Even though the color changed, the symbol would be the same. So I would have to follow that. If I decided to ignore the first two reds, I would have to follow that with a red, uh, a blue sun or a green sun. Um, I could not lay down for instance, the blue moon there, because even though it's a color change, the, the suit, the symbol stays the same. I could lay that brown key down though. One of the things that a key can be used for is to uh, complete a set of three cards like that. It's basically like trick taking. Now we've got a situation where we don't have any more red cards to play. Um, we could go ahead and lay down another color, but essentially that would mean that the first two cards we played there would be, you know, void. So we're going to use the uh, key card here and do what's called a prophecy. When you decide to do a prophecy, you discard the, the key card. It goes out of the game, and then you deal the first, the top five cards from the top of the deck. Now, you can reorder them in any order that you want, and whatever card is on the far right, the fifth card is always discarded. So this is a great way of getting rid of nightmares. As you see there, we were going to have a nightmare come up, and this way we get to put it in the discard pile, and we never have to worry about that again. There will only be nine nightmares left in the deck. So now we are going to reorder the cards here in the order that we want them. It really doesn't matter. We want that red sun to be the first one and to complete the door, uh, complete the first red door, and we're going to shuffle the deck after that. So the rest of the cards, it really does not matter what order they're going to be in. You know, I can put the key there. If the key came up next, I could have it in there and do another prophecy or something. But since they're going to be reshuffled anyway, it's kind of a moot point. So, and you never want to throw a door over there on the far right, because if you discard a door, there's only two of each color, and if you discard a door, then you automatically lose the game, because you have to have the doors. So we go ahead, we deal out the red sun that we put out, we then search the deck, bring out the red door, and we reshuffle, as you see. So we've had another red sun come up, so let's start working on blue now. We can put down the two blues. As you see, now we're kind of stuck. So now we think, all right, let's start discarding some cards. Um, you, you can discard a card, and that'll allow you to draw another card from the deck to refill your hand. We don't have any more keys, so we can't really do a prophecy. So at this point, it becomes, do we discard a red? Do we discard some of the greens? We know we're still working on the greens. We know that there's less green suns than there are red suns and blue suns. So we're probably going to see about getting rid of the red sun here. We can always pull up, like I said, you can always look through the discard deck. And as you see, the only thing we disc only thing in it right now, other than nightmares, is a is a key. So we will discard the red one. We will draw out a blue key, and there you are. Now we can throw the blue key up there. That will complete the three cards. We go through, we look for a blue door, and then you have to shuffle the deck again. All right, so now it's which group do we want to try and do? We decide to go green, which we drew out of red, so red might have been the better color. So since we've only played one green card, we go ahead and throw the red moon up there and decide we're going to start working on reds. And from here, things start happening pretty quick over the next second or two. So I'm going to uh, do a little editing, do a little freeze frame stuff here, and uh, show y'all what exactly is going on so that you can understand it um, as things uh, are popping up and you don't have to, I don't have to sit and try and explain what all happened after the fact. Now as you see I played the red moon there and it had to be a moon I couldn't play the red sun because we already had a green sun so it had to be the moon and when I did that the next card we dealt out to fill up our hand was a red door. Now the only time you, you can never keep a, a door in your hand if I had a red key in my hand I could activate that door and I would have found two red doors but since I don't have a red door that red door is going to go into what's called limbo and then you're going to deal out another Another card to fill your hand again and this card happens to be a nightmare now when you pull a nightmare out into your hand the nightmare freezes you until you deal with it and there are several ways of dealing with it as you see we have a key if we had a key in our hand we could discard the key and that would get rid of the nightmare uh, another thing you can do over there on the far right you'll see the door symbol we could discard well not discard but 
take one of our doors and throw it into limbo. Basically remove a door and we'd have to find it again, um, you know, by using three red cards or three blue cards or whatever door color we discarded. I've never done that. They may be a, a viable strategy in the early game, but I've never done that. The other two symbols on the left, we can discard our entire hand. So we could throw away the four cards that we've got sitting there in our hand and put them in the discard pile, and that would get rid of the nightmare. Or we can get rid of the top five cards from the deck. And that's what we're deciding to do since the deck is still so full. And if you watch the discard, you'll see that we lose a green moon, we lose a brown moon, but we also uh, lose two blue suns, and then you'll notice we also dealt out a nightmare. Now you can never discard a nightmare this way, so it goes into limbo. It counts as one of the five, but it doesn't get discarded. Uh, a door would be the same. If we dealt out a door, it would go into limbo. And then once you've accounted for the top five cards on the deck, the whatever's in limbo is going to go back into the deck and we're going to reshuffle again. Surprise, surprise. All right, we deal out another card. This time it was a brown moon. We've reshuffled, we're gonna play our red sun. And now we have to figure out what we're going to do here because we have no more red cards to play. So what do we discard at this point? Um, there are still eight nightmares left in the deck. There's 52 things. We're gonna get rid of a green sun. We're still in a situation where we need some reds. There's another red, but it's not helping us. So let's go ahead and discard that. And then before we throw any more cards out of our hand, it's always a good idea to take a look at the discard and see just what is sitting over there. As I said, even in the regular card game, you can always look through the discard top uh, stack and see what you've played and, or thrown away. And in fact, there are several player aids that you can find on Board Game Geek, which are basically card counters. You sit there and it's got boxes for all the cards so you can mark them off uh, as you use them and see what you've still got left in your hand. Now we see here we've discarded two red suns, three blue suns, one green sun, one green moon, one brown moon, and one brown key. We want to be careful about the blue suns because, you know, we've still got to get two blue doors up there. So we got to be careful about making sure we don't get rid of too many of those. Now, we've got enough brown cards in our hand to actually complete a door. So we play the moon and the sun, and the next replacement is an actual brown door. Now, we can throw it in limbo, or we can use the key to activate it immediately. We were already going to use the key, so I like to just go ahead, throw it in limbo, and see whether or not we get a brown card out. Another brown moon would have been perfect, and then we would have been able to save our keys. I always like to save the keys and use them last if I'm using them to complete a uh, door because there are so many wonderful uses for keys other than just automatically getting a door. The next card dealt out is a door, so it goes into limbo. Both doors go back into the deck, we shuffle, and so we go ahead and use the brown key. And that finishes up our first brown door. And we get another brown key out of the deck. It's always good. I always like to have a key, just because you can get rid of nightmares and everything. All right, there's another brown key. We're going to use the key this time. And now we've got both brown doors. Now we don't have to worry about doors, the brown doors anymore. We can actually use brown cards for discards. Let's keep working on the blue. There we go. We use a sun, a moon, and a key, and we're through with the brown doors now. Now we got a handful of green. We can definitely finish off a green door with what we have in hand and keep keys, of which we are getting a bazillion of them. Shuffle the deck again. What do we need? We need to finish another green and we need to finish a red. Now, since we've got already got both blue doors out there, I'm gonna discard the blue one and see if we can get another red one. Unfortunately, it's a nightmare. Now, I have a surfeit of keys right now. We have plenty. So I'm gonna discard one of the green ones and see if we can get rid of the nightmare with it. We gotta refill our hand and there we go. We have enough cards now to complete a red door. So we're going to go ahead, throw them up, uh, and we get another nightmare. Well, let's burn another green key, get rid of that nightmare. Hopefully not draw another one, which we did. Oh my God. So we're going to discard the last key in our hand and get rid of that nightmare. Fortunately, there's only five left in the deck. 
All right, let's try and get that. Now we're gonna have to see if we can get another red card. So it's time to start discarding blue ones again and hope that a red one comes up. It does, we can finish the red door. Only a green door left and we've got three greens in our hand. We can finish this. We can complete the green door with the cards in our hand. I'll start dealing them out. Once again, we always hang on to that green just in case we get a nightmare or something. There we are. We got the accomplishment. Take a little nap. Win a game with 15 cards or more left in our deck. And as you see, we had 20 cards, five of them being nightmares still left over. And as you see, we made it through the labyrinth and we have made it to Dreamtown and we get to take our nap. We finally get to sleep and put all the nightmares behind us. So there you go. That's a Nyrum. As I said, it is identical. It plays identical to the uh, actual tabletop card game, which I probably will get at some point in time because it does come with seven expansions. I think there's only two expansions available for the, for the digital game here, but it's a fun thing to pick up, have on your phone for these quiet moments like that. If you do get the actual card game, as you see all the shuffling, I think it's a good one to sleeve. So there you go. And the next one up on our... Adventure will be Coffee Roaster.